hey, everyone in the path of a hurricane, be safe, would you? That this means us. Yeah, seriously. Or at least yeah, me and me and Bill. No, this this one looks stubborn. It might get the clues anyway. Yeah, we'll just have gray skies and rain. Okay. Sending a message so people don't bother me in the middle of the show. Yeah. Although by sending a message to ensure that, that actually ensures that I they will... with a, Okay. But whatever. You knew what this was. Yeah, I did. Should I tweet? Oh no, the auto-tweet must have gone out, right? Surely the auto-tweet happened. Uh, it probably did, and don't call me Shirley. It did, but it says giant robot battles because Ooh. the little Twitch auto pop up thing on YouTube is notoriously behind. Yeah, it delays. It says you're now playing Magic Gathering, though. They'll figure it out. Yeah, because I don't play Magic the Gathering. That's silly. They'll know immediately that that's a lie. <laughs> okay, here, you guys good? Yes. Uh, as good as I'm going to be, which ain't saying a whole lot, I don't think. I'll sell yourself short clues. Um, I want to make a short joke, but I got I got nothing. I got nothing. I'm sorry. Also, clues. I hate you. <laughs> no, well, I, I I hate me too. Welcome to the club. It's, uh, <laughs> clues it's sent me a, a text that says, "Hey." It's not a huge club, but our numbers are growing. All right, I'm going to give out Clues' phone number. Please text Clues now. <laughs> Set your own Clues ringtone. I have clips. <sighs> okay, here we go. Ow, oh, jam. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another fun-filled episode of Monday Night Magic here on twitch.tv slash themanapool. Because I wasn't going to make a separate Monday Night Magic channel. That would be silly. That'd be crazy. Yeah. Would it? Plus, everything else is manapool, 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 so why break the streak? Exactly. Baby. What's that you got there, Bill? By the way, hi, I'm Chewy. This is Monday Night Magic number 623, and uh, immediately, hang on, to my right is Bill, and what's that you got there, Bill? Uh, immediately to my right is Fibblethip. He he was lost um, totally. on his way to the next set, so he's just hanging out here. Hmm. And then immediately to Fibblethip's right is Clues. Hey! Yeah. Hey, it's good to see you all. We, uh, we live by... Four maxims here at, uh, at at Monday Night Magic. I, I suppose you could say they are four directives that we have, and that is to uh, serve the tournament players, protect the deck lists, uphold the comp rules, and any attempt to stop the top will be stopped. You've got a lot of prime directives. Yep, just four. Just four. The fifth directive is that the, is a secret is any action taken against another member of Monday Night Magic will not be allowed. Hmm. Hmm. That'll come up sometime, I'm sure. Hmm. <laughs> That's actually how he keeps us here when we don't play Magic. We're afraid of the consequences of leaving. Correct. It's the only immunity we can hope for. <laughs> like, you know how no one's seen Jack in forever? Yeah, think about that. Mm-hmm. Who? Who? Why? Well, I don't know who you're talking about. Very good clues. So, <laughs> we've always been at war with East Asia. <laughs> Read a book. Um, hey, look, tournaments. <laughs> Turn tournament. <laughs> oh, all right, I'm sorry. I wonder. Oh, no, you're right. Tournaments. Yeah, sure. I wonder where. I wonder where my copy of 1984 is. In the office. Oh, there it is. It's right, it's right there on the bookshelf. It's right, right there. Oh, I was. I thought you'd just look around, just. <laughs> well, no, around. no, my, my copy, not my experience. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, mine's on my bookshelf with all the other various books that I kept. Mine's in the library. 
I also have Animal Farm and Brave New World right next to it. Nice. Uh, you, you probably shouldn't leave those together for too long. They could gain power. <laughs> Whoops. Like dystopian, <laughs> dystopian slivers are not what you want. By those uh, day, they could be the only thing that has power in that state. Too soon? Mm. Stay but, safe, uh, everybody. Look, seriously, the weather. <laughs> I'm worried. I'm actually really worried about North Carolina. I mean. Okay. Can you guys relocate the state? Just pick it up. Get it away from South Carolina, and I mean, if you if I could do that, you think I wouldn't have already done it? Please. Yeah, I was gonna say he'd have done that a long time ago. <laughs> so, let's talk about this. Uh, of course, on let's see, we recorded on Tuesday. Tuesday. So on Thursday, there was a massive announcement. Yes, because that's how it works. Correct. Uh, 2019 will have six Pro Tours. That is not a small number. Have we... That is more than we normally have. Like, we used to have six Pro Tours a long time ago, right? I, or was I it think only when I five? started, there were only three in Worlds. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that was before my time. So, you tell me. Did we, in fact, used to have six Pro Tours? Maybe it was only five? I don't remember. This is before I had to pay attention to that sort of thing. Hey, chat, do you guys know? There, while they look that up. Uh... <laughs> Crap source. Let's see, it's a Kibler Google. <laughs> All right, I'm going to the Wikipedia article about Magic the Gathering Pro Tour events. Damn it, Clues, you're not in. Well, I guess you are in the chat. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. There were six Pro Tours in 1996. It took place in calendar year 1996. Huh. Interesting. Well, there you go then. But it's been uh, a while. There were six in 97 as well. So yes, apparently t two years, that's a trend, right? So sure, yeah. I know that they slowly took them away until there were only three and worlds. Yeah. And then... Six shall enter, three shall leave. And then they gave us one back and turned Worlds into the smaller tournament that it is now. Right. But now, we get six. And they will be in February in Cleveland, Ohio, for some reason. In... Narnia? Uh, yeah. In Cleveland. April, in London, in the United Kingdom. In June, in Dallas, Fort Worth, in Texas... For some reason, it's in, a big airport. <laughs> yeah, in July, in July, I did not notice. February, April, June, July. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, the one in July is in uh, Barcelona, Spain. On the assumption that there will be a Barcelona in Spain. Is is that in question? Uh, it has been for several years. Oh, oh, okay. We can go into that later, too. Is this a political thing? Yes. It totally is, yes. Okay, not like dropping into the ocean thing. No. no Which no, is no, where no. my brain went because, you know, impending doom here in North Carolina. No, no. Okay, good. Uh, in November, June, July, and then November. Good Lord. Yeah. Uh, there's one in Richmond, Virginia. And then in December in Brisbane, Australia. So Pretty good. Three in the United States, two in Europe, and one in Australia. And yes, United Kingdom, you count as Europe for these purposes. Yes. Um, as I'm sure most of them would like. Uh, let's see, there's more. After Pro Tour London, so after the first two... Oh, that's a kid upstairs. I thought someone was beating on my door. I was like, Who's It's the hurricane trying to get in. <laughs> no, not for a few days. <laughs> that's how it sneaks up on you. Anyway, after London, so after the first two, uh, the size of the Pro Tours will go down from between four and 500 players or so to closer to two or 300 players. It says the total number of invites over the course of the year will remain the same over the course of the year. It'll just spread out to more events. 
So it's fewer slots per Pro Tour, but it means fewer players finishing outside the prize pool. And that they're also going to revamp how you qualify, which we don't know yet. Yeah. And of course, with six Pro Tours spaced really weirdly, like that is weird, right? I think because the first two of them are following the already, you know, announced schedule, they're going to just go as normal. And I think the idea is that the June, July ones are, you know, alternates based on, you know, you qualify for one that you're closer to. And then the um, November, December are going to probably be in the same boat. This is entirely speculation, but just from the schedule, I think that's how it's going to go. And I wouldn't be surprised. That could be. If in 2020 they had eight. If this is just the plan of just having the close to a United States one and then the other location one and just doing two per cycle. If they're going to cut the size in half too, like if they want to maintain that, that's probably what's going to happen. Makes sense. That's some speculation, just applying some logic to it. It's not announced to be that way. Okay, so can I add some more speculation applying bizarro logic, anti-logic? Sure. Something. As long as you oh. qualify it with the appropriate ridiculous term. Okay, so this is this is dumb and not happening. But so <laughs> sell me on it, pro- Clues. Six. Yeah, it's dumb and not happening. So let me explain it in in gory detail and derail us for as long as possible. So six pro tours next year. Eight pro tours the year after that. You see where I'm going? Then ten pro tours. Eventually, we're going to replace all GPs with Pro Tours. Cutting down on the number of people invited to each Pro Tour until eventually all Pro Tours have 16 people, 15 will end in prizes. So every week we just have worlds again? (laughs) Yes. And (laughs) this show will then become, we won't talk about the deck list, we'll talk about the deck list of the one person who finished outside outside of the, the money 15, yeah <laughs> and therefore did not did not money so there you go you d- d- heard it here first and we're sorry <laughs> i really hope that's the first place you've heard that theory <laughs> otherwise man otherwise you've been inside my head and it's creepy get out anyway back to the real world so six yeah. pro tours uh, of course, since they're separating, or there are now six, that means we can't have Pro Tour set name. So we're yeah. going back to the old standard of Pro Tour name of city. Right. Makes sense. Which uh, my Mana Pool co-host Brian pointed out was, was kind of bad. Because when you say Pro Tour Honolulu... There's a lot. Yeah. Like, which, okay, which one? But then if you give a year, that doesn't mean anything to people like me, because I don't know years. <laughs> Admittedly, attaching it to the set name made it abundantly clear what the meta for that event was. But they won't be able to do that here. Yeah. Uh, from now on, we'll just name them all after uh, actions within previous sets. So Pro Tour Abzan, or Pro Tour Boros. Can we name them after factions that exist in the city where they happen? No. That it's sounds dangerous. Like just <laughs> Pro Tour Boros from here on out. Like the Pro Tour Kiwanis. <laughs> Pro, Pro Tour, Tour Drop Bear. Rotary Club. Rotary Club. <laughs> Ooh. I bet they have amazing catering from a local Italian restaurant. Or... Or uh, we'll name all the Pro Tours after items on the Taco Bell dollar menu. The Pro Tour Ooh. brought to you by Taco Bell. You better play aggro. Stark Maximum <laughs> says, Chewy, <laughs> you've had some spectacularly bad ideas. But let me tell you, you have outdone yourself. <laughs> That's terrifying. But then, yeah, so six wait, Pro Tours this, next year. This is a good Don't point. It, it, Thulak, I think I said that right, in the chat says, as someone who hasn't played or kept up with pro play in the last 20 years, I don't feel like I've missed much. Six PTs a year and a PT named after City. Same as it was pre-2000. Look, we're really committing to this 25th <laughs> anniversary thing. <laughs> um, give it a little more time and you, half of your packs will contain basic lands. 
and the other half of the cards that are good will become restricted. We're all playing deck masters starting next year. What he means is half of each pack will be basic lands. Not half of your packs will have a basic land in them. No, no, that's right. And uh, when you open sealed deck, you play with the cards you opened, period. You do not add any additional basic lands. Yep. Also, gambling laws will kick in because we'll be playing for anti. Yeah, totally anti. Oh, hey, speaking of anti, I forgot to add, we forgot to to update about the bracket uh, for uh, goblins. Oh, you mean auntie? (laughs) Tomorrow's head head to head. Yeah, that's what reminded me was the anti auntie. Oh, we'll put a link in the show notes. We'll get there uh, eventually. Yeah, Yeah, I'll see what I can. I'll probably no, I probably won't. Okay. Okay, great. How about it? Do we do? Are we done with the pro tour thing? I think we've run out of the. Uh, There's more coming, but they have to run it by the pro player consultants because. What the? Well. We lost Bill. Screw that guy. The hurricane showed uh, up early. Yeah. It's 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 fine. I'll take over for Bill. I'll fill yeah, in. Clues, your face is now huge, and there's a little Cthulhu. Oh, never mind. Bill's back. Oh, <laughs> oh was was Cthulhu back here where I was supposed to be? Uh, yeah, no, he was in. in that the was very spot. strange. But okay. But, hey, buddy, are you back now? Yeah, I don't know why I left. Were you <laughs> totally lost? Um, he was. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have taken directions. Were you lost but seeking? Because that's somebody else. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's a really good card, though. Yeah, but it is somebody else. Yeah, that's not my deal. I, anyway, I'm more of an embracing kind of person. Dear listeners, uh, as I was saying before Bill threw the world into chaos, uh, Bill's new name is now the Fire Nation. Um, <laughs> I mean, Mono Red. We're, uh, they, there's more coming, but they have to run it by... Uh, the pro player consultants and get feedback and then tweak uh, on the qualification system. So that'll be coming soon. TM. They will make an announcement that they're going to be making an announcement. I have, I have confidence. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they did with this. Um, It was either Monday or Tuesday night. They announced when the announcement would be. And I was like, good job. As long as they're consistent. Yeah. Okay, then. So that's that. Uh, let's go to events as GP Detroit or GP Robocop, as apparently yeah. we're, we're calling it now. Yeah, that's our four prime directives. Five, no. They're, they're just directives. Six? Can't have four prime directives. Yeah, this is not this You is, should know this. Not you work Trek. in space. Nope, we got, we got six of them now. <laughs> Wait, we where does Don't Die fit in? <laughs> we can't interfere with pre-warp civilizations unless it's convenient. That is very that. true, yeah. And just don't time travel unless it's a movie. You know, occasionally we'll just invoke the Prime Directive in situations where it doesn't really apply, but that's our justification for not doing anything. Nice. It's totally not that we're lazy. So, how many people were at GP RoboCop? Uh, GP RoboCop is a Team Unified Modern event, so there were 532 teams which means 1,596 citizens. Good lord. That... That seems like a lot. It's a lot of people for a team event. Especially Team Unified Modern. Hmm. It's a niche team event. However, Modern is popular. And I guess if you team up with people that run very different decks from you, it's not that big of a jump. Detroit's coming back, so... I hope not. This is scary. Not anymore. Or not as scary. Or does it still produce M and M's every third upkeep? I love M and M's. I stole some from Mom's uh, candy jar when I was (laughs) when I was at home over the weekend. Like a handful, and and I I, getting spaghetti. So I lifted up. I I lifted up the. I did have spaghetti. The the old man and I went out for Italian food. I lifted up the glass when you get M and M out of Detroit. I lifted up the glass lid and went to move it out of the way so I could reach in and I didn't move it far enough and it hit the edge and made a loud glass on glass sound and it made the old man in the living room swear loudly and this already scared me and then him swearing scared me and I dropped my M&Ms. That is a good story. It had tension. It had uh, had a resolution in that your M&Ms were now all over the floor, I guess. Uh, Have you tried the mint M&Ms? I have in the past. 
Tic Tacs. Those are called Tic Tacs. Okay, because they now... No, they're not called Tic Tacs. They, they now have a crispy mint M&M that I tried recently. Stop adding words. It's not getting better. And, and they were delicious. I mean, the crispy M&Ms are pretty good. The mint M&Ms are pretty good. I can see them being better together, though. Yeah, I found that they were good, but they triggered a heartburn, like in seconds and i don't really know why something in the mint is just not not good for that was there peanut butter in them uh i don't think so oh peanut butter gives me heartburn so really yeah poor soul well, that's it, it is it is I bad really yeah love peanut butter that's very unfortunate like peanut butter is amazing yeah i recently had some goober grape that was amazing that's where they put the peanut butter and the jelly in the same jar you can just Anyone, you are any goober i'm not that lazy that greatest monster Look, I was camping, okay? We just wanted to take the one jar and a loaf of bread so that we could have a snack, so we just grabbed some goober grape while we were at the I store. I love that you went like camping and brought thing. sandwich materials. It's not that it's not like a thing that I eat every day. It's just I it was I thought it was interesting. I was just sharing my life with you, pouring out my heart. Wasn't this a Team Unified Modern event? There we go. Okay, so because it's Team Unified Modern, which Oh God, uh, we should explain that, shouldn't we? Again, for those yeah, that don't remember. I yeah, they don't. They don't happen all that like crazy okay. often. So, Team Unified Modern. You got a team of three people. Each of them brings a modern deck. Aside from cards that are basic, namely basic lands, um, snow lands, that kind of stuff that say basic on them, um, you can't have any overlapping cards in the main or sideboards. Um, they all have to be modern legal. You're still following all the other modern deck construction rules. And then you'll go up against other teams of three. And, you know, play on like you do at other big events. Uh, it's kind of weird to talk about due to the deck building restrictions because this does include the rest of your mana base. So it's pretty common to not have the same colors among multiple decks. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you that up front because the winning deck list immediately throws, you know, kerosene all over that argument by being five color humans but yeah humans we'll was very popular humans all right so the winning team was well i guess it says right here william corson antonio perez and andrew coco lopez uh corson was playing five color humans perez was playing mono green tron and lopez was playing just guy control so that's a thing uh in Oh, weird. You guys don't see that on stream. Don't see what? When I pop open the... Uh, oh, the drop down? Yeah, the drop down. The drop down doesn't appear on stream. That's actually rendered on a different layer of your video. Oh. Huh. That's also why taking screenshots in video games sometimes gets you a black screen. Oh. I, okay. There you go. Random there's computer knowledge. On a green tron, and there's just cut control. There we go. We're not going to go over these because it, it's Team Unified Modern. It's a weird format. Yeah. And, these, yeah. And we these deck lists mean nothing outside of a Team Unified event. And well, due to the, the nature of Team, I, you don't, don't necessarily know. have the best deck based on all of that quirkiness. More that one, yeah. The the I think that uh, Modern is, is broad enough to where you can actually just play straight decks. Yeah. And not have that much overlap, but... But because of the conditions going on and the fact that, you know, two people can play, you know, really, really well with their decks and a third one can be a little behind and you can still win your way through everything. Yeah. So you're saying you, it. you guys are going to carry me, is what you're saying. We're Pretty not much, playing yeah. modern. Oh, well, that's fair. Okay, I'll carry you both. So, uh, in second place, we've got Sam Party playing the Black Red Hollow One deck, Matt Nass playing the Hardened Scales deck with animation module huh hmm. and uh pv ddr playing bant spirits paulo paulo victor dama de rosa by the way did you know that, that his name is paulo victor i didn't <laughs> uh, i've been told that i don't think that's right i don't think that's right either no <laughs> it's funnier this way it is wait does it, it say certainly is but... well, see up here it's right boo uh, but down here, not as such. No, 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 they're saying he was victorious by getting second place. Oh, Paulo the Victor. Don yeah. Rosa. Gotcha, okay. It's like There's Benny the Mule. Or, nonsense going on. Or Lorenzo uh, the Fink or something. What's your vector, Victor? Uh, Roger, Roger. <laughs> That's what you both know. Good luck. 
Welcome we're all to, counting on you. We're all counting on you. <laughs> Welcome to Airplane Cast, <laughs> where um, we make references to airplane. So, in third place, Brian Kennell. <laughs> Kennell? Kennell? One of those is running a white blue control. Uh, Jose David Marzuka Lozano. Is that right? Jose David right. Marzuka Lozano. Okay, I, I have to scroll up here to the uh, the player list, uh, the, the profile pictures to make sure. Is playing Mardu Pyromancer. And Bradley Tinney is playing Infect because he is uh, a monster. Or hungry. And then well, it doesn't matter if he's hungry. He doesn't get to stop until the rest of the team is done. Uh, but Well, no, he can. He can walk away from the table. He just yeah, but, can't come back if he does that. Yeah, but then he's a bad teammate, so don't do that. Right, but he's a monster <laughs> playing Infect. We just talked about this. Oh, my God, you're right. Checks out. <laughs> Uh, Besides, in, one of his teammates is playing Pyromancer. It'll be look. Fun. I don't. I don't know anything about Bradley Tinney. He may be a nice person. I don't know. It's just. I mean, he's playing in Vic. Clearly not. Uh, in fourth <laughs> look, place, Jonathan Rowe okay. is running five color humans. Uh, Felix Say Say C. One of those is running red green scape shift. Wow. And Dan Lanthier is running white blue control. Can I just say? Sure. Um, a, a big thank you to, and I know that they're not listening, but to a big thank you to whoever did uh, this coverage page for actually putting their full names in this profile pick lineup. Very much so, names. yes. That is helpful. Thank you so much. That is way, way better than I've seen it done sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it's got all the information. It's got the place they finished, their prize winnings, and then full names. And full names, yes. The, uh, and then the, the C profile, thing, just in case you want to click on that. Yeah, the other thing I'll mention is it's nice that they used just the Planeswalker logo backdrop for these pictures rather than when they occasionally use, like, an actual picture of a Planeswalker so they're not getting photobombed by anything. I mean, I really like when Chandra's back there and everyone's just on fire. But... Yeah, well, yeah. that's that's fair. What they need are scale birds so that they can look bigger than they are. That would be pretty sweet, actually. I'll have to put that in the request list. I'm sure they'll get right on that. Yeah. Because the, I mean, if you're getting your your picture taken for the top whatever here, then clearly you are a giant among Magic players. Huh? Yeah. Huh? You should get some, like, cloud scraper background or something to feel massive. Or, at the very least, they should get some of that Theros artwork back out so that you look like you're on top of a pantheon of some kind. It'd be amazing. I'm down for that. But yeah, that's GP Robocop. Yeah, yeah, not uh, not just a whole lot to talk about there. Yeah. Oh, it looks like Seth Manfield took uh, Player of the Year, maybe? I, that sounds right. Plausible. Top stories. <laughs> Still tight. Coming into Detroit. No, it's not. It's not decided yet. Like the very first picture is Brad Nelson and Brian Bronduin holding Seth Manfield's hands up with, in a victory pose. So I thought. It does seem like that would be the implication. But, but no, I read it and it doesn't say that anyway. <laughs> no. So. Huh. Nice picture, though. So, it, you know, they can just dig that out if he wins. Yeah. But that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So, really, the only other... Hang on, I might sneeze. You would. Is it... Hey, Fibbletip. I'm sorry. Hey, <laughs> The only other thing really that's going... Oh, wait. Yeah, Japanese Nationals happened. But since we didn't really talk about any other Nationals... Yeah. No sense The link is there if you want to see it. But yeah, the link is in the show notes. Here, I'll I'll put it on screen. Boom. Uh, Masahita Moriyama won. There you go. That's more than we said about all the other Nationals. Yeah ever because there are more nations than they covered and it's kind of unfair to go too deep on any of them 
So there we go. So the only other thing that's really going on is Guilds of Ravnica, right? Huh. Mm, pretty much. Are we going? Are we going back to Ravnica? <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's do that. Never hate clues. <laughs> Again, I think we talked about this earlier. You joined the club. <laughs> So, hey, look, split cards again. We even talked about this last week. Yeah, I, I closed that article and wasn't going to talk about it because it's pointless. So, uh... <laughs> well, now, you know, there was an article about a thing we talked about last week. Yeah. Uh, so what what do we what do we do here? Hang on. Let me let me take this back to this. What do we do here? Uh, just pull out a few cards that seem important and then I think that's fair. Wrap it up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. for background, the last time we went to Ravnica, Return to Ravnica had a large number of really impactful cards across multiple formats. It was a very high power set. And as a result of the ridiculous density of card value in it, it was actually very hard to acquire product for the first run of it. Um, it was probably the most successful set we'd seen in years in terms of people just straight up buying things out. And so it's not too much of a surprise that some of the early cards previewed for the new one are also all on board the hype train. Whether or not they'll survive the journey on the hype train remains to be seen, but they're certainly sprinkling some nice stuff out there to talk about. So we picked out a few cards here. Um, for the full list, you should probably go listen to the Mana Pool where they'll talk about everything. But that? Oh, hey. Like. Thank you for the bits, Gothic. Bling, bling. Bits. It's like I heard a sound. I, I, I have not learned what each of my... After all this time, I still haven't learned what each of my uh, stream notification sounds are. Anytime I hear a sound that obviously didn't come from the call I'm on or the game I'm playing, I like look over at the, at OBS, like, what was that? That was a bit donation. Cause Gothic is a sweetheart like that. Yeah. But okay. So let's just talk about a couple of cards. Here is, uh, here's that super sweet animated Vraska complete with a little creepy pet at the, the top of the, uh, cards link. Yeah. Isn't that adorable? No, less pirate. Um, yeah, much less pirate. Buh. Okay, so the handful of cards we were going to talk about. So we've got... Uh, what is this called? The March of the Multitudes. Yep. Previewed today. What? Yeah, most of these were previewed today. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> that's the beginning of the, the season. The first day of previews. Yeah. Uh, so, so hey, uh, one of you, tell us about that, would you? Um, okay. Uh, March of the Multitudes cost an X, green, white, white. For an instant, mythic rare. Convoke, big surprise. And create X, one, one, white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. So, at lowest normal cost of four you're getting a one one lifelink soldier probably not that exciting but obviously it scales up pretty tremendously and because of convoke it could scale up pretty drastically and as an instant you could totally cast this at the end of your opponent's turn when you don't need those blockers anymore so yeah you can pretty cool and then we have the art here by Zach Stella, which is super sick yeah. for a multitude of reasons. There's a lot going on. Oh, I see what you did there. Wait, what's the name of the card? Oh, I didn't even do that on purpose. Is that bad? Yeah, I know. That's that uh, seems that's bad. Judge material. I hate you. Uh, I hate. Look, we went over so this. Sh <laughs> should we? Uh, should we point out? What's going on here in the art? Uh, no, no, no. I, th I think people should just look really closely themselves. I don't know. Fibblethip uh, there seems to be just gesticulating, gesticulating wildly. He's excited. What? Why are you excited, little buddy? 
It's like he's whispering, but I'm wearing headphones, so I can't hear it. Why can't I open? There's no activate Zoom. Yeah, there's no right click, open in new tab on Twitter. Um, no, there's not. They don't want you to do that. Uh, just zoom in in your browser window. If you go back to actually Twitter and not in the opened up link, you can you can do that. So yeah, if you'll look right here, and those of you in the stream, you can see our totally lost little friend is still lost because I I don't think he belongs. I don't think he meant to be there. Yeah, I, I don't think this is where he's supposed to be. I I'm fairly, fairly confident that Thibblethip was on his way to the food court. Like, he's like, oh, man, Orange Julius. And then out of nowhere, oh, I'm surrounded by one ones with lifelink. And I don't get Orange Julius. This is my life now. This is the worst. He's been lost there for five years. <laughs> Poor Will Fibblefib. Or... <laughs> so, yeah. he He's adorable. Aw. Yep. I would really appreciate it if he appeared in like a third of the cards and it just became the constant Easter egg. I know that's not going to be the case. That would be pretty great. I bet. You know what? It wouldn't surprise me if he shows up in like one card for each guild at the very least. That would be nice. Like the Fibble cycle. The f or if he showed up in every mythic rare so that you had to look for him in all of those. That'd be pretty neat. It would. Okay, so that's that's one. That card's pretty sick, but well, the most important part is obviously Fibble Fib. It's an art win. By the way, for those of you that were trying, if if you're looking at this page, which is after you click on the the page in Twitter, there there's no you can't see it, but there's no uh, right click, open image in new tab. But if you're on just the actual tweet and you right click, it it's there. Yeah. In case you want to get a closer look, that's how I did that. It was like that. Yeah. Look at him. Okay. So next up. Oh, I didn't open these in the right place. Here it is. So next Let's up we have uh, a Guilds of Ravnica card. Actually, no, let's do this one next. We have another Guilds of Ravnica card, Niv Mizzet Perrin. Perun? Perun? How the hell do you say that word? Yeah, I was going to ask is, is that Perrin or Perun? Or Perun? Perun? I always thought it was Perun, but I don't know. Yeah, I... This is why I don't do coverage, along with every other reason. Yeah, it's one of many. Um, I Chat? What do you got? Also random hot takes? Great. Uh, it's niv -Mizzet. P. Yeah, niv -Mizzet <laughs> Guild Boss. <laughs> yeah. No, wait. Guild Originator. That's, yeah. that's what that means, yeah. Guild Progenitor. It means that he's, you know, a founder. He is OG. Uh, and he reminds us of Niv Mizzet OG. Yeah. Also, uh, Mini Meatbag is now following. I certainly hope that's not a droid in disguise. Anyway. Do you want to talk about the Dragon Man? It seems like clues should, because it's... it's uh, yeah, well, it's... It's half the correct colors. I mean, it's got three symbols you like on it. That's true. All right, yeah. so uh, Niv Mizzet uh, P. The P word. The, the P word. Uh, he costs blue, 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 red, red, red. So you got six mana. Three of them are good. Three of them aren't. <laughs> Legendary creature, dragon, wizard. Only a rare, not a mythic. Only a rare. Only a rare. So look for this guy to show up more often. He is a 5-5. Five, five. This spell can't be countered. Well, I kind of like that. Yeah, I, I, no, no countering my spells. That seems good, although I don't know where I'm getting the blue mana to cast this. He has flying, because of course he has flying. He's a dragon. Look at those wings. Of course he has flying. Majestic. Whenever you draw a card, niv Mizzet, Perrin, Perun, Parin, deals one damage to any target. So as soon as you figure out how to pronounce his name, whenever you draw a card... Deal one damage to any target. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, you draw a card. So, storm players beware? Question mark. Removal. 
beware. <laughs> like, your opponent casts something to kill him because they couldn't counter him. You still get a card. And a ping. And a, and ping. a ping. Yep. Better make it good. On your turn, you draw a card. You get a ping. You're running blue-red. You're probably going to cast spells if you get to untap with it, or you cast it when you've got more mana open. You brainstorm. It's a lightning bolt. So there's been... I've seen a lot of pros look at this and be like, oh, the mana cost, but I'm pretty sure that was required, right? Yes. Yeah, pretty much. I, I'm also not as choked up about this because we're going to be in the land of good mana. Like, this is a, you're running these two colors deck, not a, I put him in my five color control deck. <laughs> I think it'll be okay. Yeah. Also, he's a dragon wizard. Look at him. He's all smug and dragony. There you go, then. Like, that is the look of a dragon who sits on whatever castle he wants. What was that? Funky Bass Buddy is now following. Okay, then. Or, or it could be Funky Bass Buddy. Depending. <clears throat> no, I'm, I, mean... I, I, I know Funky Bass Buddy, and it's okay. definitely not Bass. Although, That's I don't know. He, he just dropped a... Uh... He just dropped a picture in the chat that is totally a fish holding a, a, a base. So maybe it's both. Could be anything. Yeah. That's what Can't makes it both. funky. Yeah. But yeah, it's a Niv Mizzet Big Dagron sits where he wants. Yep, pretty much. Uh, oh yeah, I that's true. Someone... Where where does a, a giant originator of the Is It Guild sit? wherever he would like yeah yeah as long as it doesn't upset nickel bolus i mean i'm kind of counting on that upset being an amazing fight i figure we're just going to find out that he's been nickel bolus all along he's that would be weak just sauce. a mask everyone would hate that just like, a mask he'll pull off his face and, <laughs> yes and, the horns and he would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for <laughs> you meddling kids you meddling mages i would actually be more entertained if it turned out that he was ugan all along and all of that time travel stuff was just a you know joke like fooled you i'm so smart jay spencer said the most niv missity niv mizzet whoever niv mizzeted yeah and how Agron. So this this didn't pop up as a sound effect, but Jersey Bricklayer just uh, continued the gift sub that he got from uh, Magnus a few weeks ago. All right. So thank you. That's awesome. By the way, for anyone who watches Twitch streams uh, here in on Twitch, duh, it is September. Resubs are only a dollar this month, and if you were gifted a sub then you can continue that for a dollar. And us streamers still get this, the full amount. So any of you who watch any sort of streams, hint, hint, not just this one, but any of them, by all means, look into that because you can help make a streamer's day, especially a smaller streamers, with uh, just a simple dollar. It's yeah. pretty awesome. And for any of you who watch Twitch streams not on Twitch, your insolence has been noted. <laughs> <clears throat> wait, wait where <laughs> correct <laughs> wow all right so that was that was niv Mizzet, the 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 Mizzetist. he's yes. pretty cool he's pretty sick yep. but then i think the real star of today's previews uh has got to be the one from channel fireball oh, uh control zoom yep. zoom 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 assassin's trophy this card is ridiculous yeah i don't i don't think anybody's talked about this card today Chewie. no no we're, not we're at all breaking ground here by even mentioning its name correct assassin's trophy for a what was that dakota skymaster is now following that's a cool name wait does that mean that when clues does a sky check he has to report to you oh only in dakota though i guess right Okay, yeah. clues. Wait, where are you Dakota? currently? Uh, it didn't say. I'm I am in neither Dakota. So Maybe it's the Dakota region, and that covers both of them. 
That's fair. Yeah. Okay, so Assassin's Trophy for a black and a green. For a black and a green is an instant. It's a black and a green and is an instant. All right? All right. It's rare. Sounds like murder. A little bit. Destroy target permanent and opponent controls. Its controller may search their library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. There are no more words on this card. I mean, there are. They're pretty Beyond sick, Beyond their actually. library and some flavor text, but... A, uh, a power vacuum for the Azorius. A keepsake for Vraska. And the art depicts... Isperia, I think. I'm pretty sure. Who has been turned to stone. Not a good way to go. Not really. Asperia, yeah, remember, is... is the... Uh, the leader of the Azorius Guild. Was. Was. Well, it was. The, the, yeah. Yeah, this card is ridiculously good. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is a very good card that... If it doesn't see play in other formats, I have even less grasp of magic than I think I do. Yeah, this is going to be... Get your play set now. Just do it. What does Abrupt Decay cost? Uh, Black green. Black green. And what does Abrupt Decay hit? Uh, every non-land permanent lands? converted mana costs three or less. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Like and the this... advantage of abrupt decay is that it can't be countered by spells or abilities, right. but it can target a lot less stuff. Yeah. So this uh, now the downsides it doesn't it doesn't exile. It doesn't. I was going to say it, the... it doesn't bury, but that's not. It hasn't been a thing for years. No. <laughs> but it does the other half of it, Path to Exile. Uh, yeah, and and they get to go get a, a land. That is that is a downside. But yeah, and that land doesn't enter tapped. It just enters. Yeah. I don't know that that's going to be important. I'm just mentioning it so we don't screw that up. I mean, also keep in mind that you can hit lands with this. So you can uh, sinkhole them to trade out a really important relevant land that you might not otherwise have any hate for for a basic land. And in some formats they might not have one in their main. Yeah. So, so take that. Cards like this tend to change formats around them. I mean, look, if nothing else, this is uh, your Abrupt Decay copies 5 through 8 in your I'm going to mess with everything you do deck. Yeah, I can see this being played in Standard, obviously. I can see this being played in Modern. Yeah. I can even make a case for it being played in Legacy, but I don't think in oh, the yeah. same amount. I I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I like, think it's... I think the versatility get, of getting rid of a problem is huge. It does hit everything, doesn't it? Oh, my God. Yeah, like, it really you does. You just turned off Tron. Oh, wow. Like, Have they made the Urza Lands basic yet? Nope. No. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. But this is pretty massive, and I think that this is going to be one of those cards that... I suspect that if you open copies of this, you should probably hang on to them if you ever plan on playing Constructed. Like, in general. Because even if you don't ever play the card, it will probably hold a decent amount of value due to the fact that people are going to want them in other formats. So, this is going to be really good. And they knew that when they designed it. There's no yeah, subtlety to this. <laughs> nope. No subtlety at all. Wait, is there subtlety? No. Wait, let me check. No. Okay, just checking. Also worthy of note, it is... It does clarify an opponent controls. So, if you happen to pop this thing up while you're, say, blood braid elfing your way through life, you can't accidentally backfire this and have to hit any of your own stuff. Though, honestly, if you're blood braiding to it, at minimum, you're going to wreck one of their lands. 
Um, but like that is there. Likewise, if someone for some reason is trying to redirect it, it's not going to work the way they want it to. So fun little interactions. Now that most of these cards just say an opponent controls. So yeah, really good. Also, it's a may trigger, or rather it's a may condition for your opponent searching. They might not want to search. They might want to keep that card that they just fetched on top of their library. They might. So that's fun too. Yeah. Like I, I imagine the comedy of they've just fetched something up, you destroy another thing, and now they have this ad choice. <laughs> Pretty funny. Oh, yeah, that's actually Hmm. What? I uh, know, I was just thinking of uh of this in a uh a legacy junk deck. Um so that we can get some white in there for Avon Mind Sensor. So then yeah, go ahead, search the top four cards of your library for that basic land. Oh, no. Great. Hey, you know what the other word for junk is? Uh junk? No, no, the, the other word for junk. Yeah, yeah, it's junk. No, no, it's rubbish. <laughs> no, that would be uh, red, blue, black, and that's that's something else. Y you guys are fun. Um, I'm confused. Well, you said rub, rubbish. See, rubbish, red, blue, black. <sighs> Whereas junk is yeah, you, you let him do that. Black, green, white. Look, you could stop me, but you don't. Let's see. I could just go to Discord and oh, I can't mute yes. him from here without yes. messing up the stream. Oh, good, good. Yeah, teach you. Excellent. I mean, I only have to mess up the stream for a second, so. <laughs> so yeah, there is one more card actually, that. Uh... Hey. Uh, one of you guys, could you get that link from the show notes, the uh, the funny named card, and drop it in the chat so I can click it? Oh, sure. Yeah, hang on a second here. And yes, uh, Cap Abzan is the one that I was going for. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how do I? Oh, there it is. Copy. And you would like that into Twitch well, chat. Which into the Twitch chat. Yeah, because that's okay. the one that I can I can click on. Sure. Thank there you. you go. You're welcome, sir. Uh -huh. I'm here go. to help and make bad puns. And you're all out of help. And I'm all I'm fresh out of help. Hold it, let me check. Nope, don't have any more. Fair enough. Okay. So this card is uh interesting. One, it has the best name ever. It's pretty up there. Hypothesizzle. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Uh, for three, a blue, and a red, it is a common instant that says draw two cards. Period. Then, you may discard a non-land card. When you do, Hypothesizzle deals four damage to target creature. So, this is one of those uh, shiny new... Uh, reflexive trigger cards. Yeah. That they started. When was the the Manticore clues? Uh, that was Amonkhet. Okay. And so this is a card. If you want, you can pay five mana to draw two cards. And that's it. You don't have to target anything. You just pay five mana, draw two cards. Uh, because you don't choose a target just to cast it. Say so then you may discard an on land card. And when you do, then you pick a target. Yep. Right. Be giving so you choices. If someone, you know, you go to. If this didn't work that way, and someone. The way it would have to be worded to not work that way, and someone bounced the creature, that would counter the spell, and then you don't get to draw two cards? Yeah, a lot of things would be really wonky if they didn't do it. Yeah, this way. but this, this new reflexive trigger thing that they have come up with in recent years. Allows them to do stuff like this, which is amazing. So that works the way you wanted it to. It yes. is some amazing tech from the folks at R&D. Yeah. I really appreciate Snoop Dogg for this invitational card. 
I don't know. This is not an invitational card. It's the uh, like they did with that that uh, corset, I guess designer or whatever they were called. Oh, Celeb- celebrity right. Celebrity designer. Yeah. I can't remember what they called them. Right. Yeah, I remember. Like when they got Penny Arcade to make a card and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. That that makes more sense. Yeah, it's like blowing up an arcane library in a thermobaric explosion, but in a good way. As long as it's a good way. And That's that, a good title, too. That quote is attributed to Bori and Don, Is it Blast Seeker? I don't know about you guys, but Blast Seeker is something I want on my resume. That's a good one. Yeah. But yeah, there are uh, a few cards already that they've shown that do something like this. Uh, there was something with Surveil. The, uh, the Sphinx. Yeah, the Sphinx that... The 4-3 that has Surveil, I think, 4. And then you can bounce a permanent or something like that. It's a dream, dream eater. Oh right, yeah, I saw that one earlier today. Yeah, um, I yeah. can't remember the is wording that here? on it. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that one. That no, not none of these either. cards are going to be in the gallery until tomorrow because yeah. of the nature of the gallery. By the oh, way, wait, hey, wait, Narcomoeba is. is back, everybody. Oh yeah, we Ooh. totally learned that it packs. Yeah, as are the uh, the Shocklands, which I don't think we mentioned last week. I think we just missed it completely during the show. We talked about it, I Did think, we? before the show. Okay. I feel like we made an offhand comment about it because, of course, they would be. Yeah. Which is really about the amount of time you need to spend talking about it. <clears throat> it's what you get when you go to Ravnica. So if we go to Dream Eater... What's it called? Is it just a Dream Eater? It is Dream Eater. Two words, yes. It's a Nightmare Sphinx. And clearly with this artwork, yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, okay, here we go. I mean, Daydream so, Sphinx just isn't the same. For four blue blue, it's a four three Nightmare Sphinx, which is, I think, best fla- uh, best uh, type line. Easily. It's pretty good. Uh, it has flash and flying. When it enters the battlefield, surveil four. When you do, you may return target non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. And this is another reflexive trigger that lets you... Uh, Mm, excuse me, uh, open image in new tab. There we go. That lets you not choose a target until you surveil. Yeah, you're actually able to utilize the information you have about what's coming. Yeah. Which is nice and very on flavor. Yeah, and absolutely terrifying. I'm going to close this now. And if Dreamweaver doesn't run through your head when you're casting this, you're doing something oh, wrong with your life. Dream Eater. Yeah. Exactly. See? If you're not careful, you get pulled from YouTube. That That is actually true. I've had two videos get content ID claims recently that weren't bogus. One is uh, a Stanley Parable video because music playing in the background in one of the sections is actual music. And then uh, DuckTales Remastered, the moon music. None really of the other uh, videos got tagged, but the moon level did for music. Huh. I'm like, thanks, DuckTales. You... Yeah. Woo. Thank but anyway. You, I got your back. I hate you both. So. Justified. I guess that was a good album. Hmm? That was Justin Timberlake. Mm-hmm. Anyway. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of other cards, and you'll see more of them as the week goes on. If you want a rundown of all the highlights, go listen to Manable, because we're not going to go over everything here. <clears throat> yeah, we're we're not going that much. That's yeah, not that's, our place. That's what we do. That um, is his place. Also, uh, pointed preview, at clues. Th- these are preview cards, not mistakes cards. Clues, now you have to do it. Do what? You have to go over all of the cards on your podcast because Fibbletip pointed at the wrong person. Oh, that's that's not happening. <laughs> um, so I find that that guy has to do it. We we have to record first. Um, man, that hurts. Uh, the officially previewed cards appear the day after in the official card preview gallery. 
So finding cards that have been previewed today, today is tricky. I recommend mythicspoiler.com for all of your uh, preview needs. Because they can I do not. not I, that's great. That's I fine. Recommend I'm just saying. Waiting a day. If you oh, no, no, no. I'm just saying, can't. I'm just saying if you're trying to track something down, you're like, man, I know that I saw that there was this blue card that was spoiled and I really hate it and I need to go see what it was. At least they're all in one place at Mythic Spoiler. I, I appreciate your informed hatred of blue. It's yeah, a very blue kind of hatred. It is awful. Blue is. Anyway, so a couple more little things going on here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, today, well, I'll let Clues do this because I'm sure Clues is the one who put this in the show notes. Yeah, because my name's right next to it. You see that column that we have there for who added this or when we're trying to figure out whose fault this was? Oh, it's well, my fault. No, I don't. I don't have that open because then it would be on stream. Ah, okay. So yeah. uh, earlier today uh on so for I, I don't know how many of you out there i don't know what the the venn diagram for magic players and npr listeners is but i think it might be bigger than you might expect in the general population i don't know though but earlier today uh on the show on point from wbur uh they had in the i think it was the second hour of on point today uh, was 25 years of Magic the Gathering and how it's changed the gaming world. So they had uh, several guests on, uh, including, uh, man, I'm going to, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this name and I totally apologize. Uh, Nima Jerome, uh, who is a contributing writer at the New Yorker, uh, Mark Rosewater, who some of you may have heard of. Uh, he's a guy who works on, man, uh, it's, it's escaping me right now. Roseanne. Roseanne. Uh, yeah, that's right. He, uh, he used to, he used to write for Roseanne back in the day, not the more recent one, but right, right, right. Back in the day. Oh, and he's also the head designer for Magic the Gathering. I think that might be why folks might know him as well as, uh, Tifa Robles, who is the, f uh, one of the founders and organizers of the Lady Planeswalker Society. Um, uh, she also used to be a brand manager at, at Magic. So uh, they had them on uh, discussing uh, Magic the Gathering and how it's changed over the years and the things that it's done. I did not get a chance to listen to this myself, so I cannot tell you how it was. Uh, but the link in the show notes will take you to the page where you can listen to the piece. Uh, it is like 45 or 50 minutes long. Uh, but they do have some interview highlights in the text the text coverage. <laughs> uh, they got top eight uh, comments and uh, the 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 meta game of the look. This is a really inside baseball layered joke I just did there. Uh, but you can go and uh, and check it out. So somebody you know have have a listen if you wanna if you wanna hear more. It's neat that Magic is getting um, I'm gonna call it mainstream press coverage for a certain value of mainstream. Sure. Let's go with that. I mean, NPR is more mainstream than, let's say, Monday Night Magic, so. It is? I hope so. Yeah. I've been doing this all wrong, man. I thought this was NPR. Why do you think I have this mic? Do you see this mic? I mean, that does explain the monotone. <clears throat> yeah. Our, our mid-Atlantic accent. It's, it's not really, but... Anyway, this means we need to ask them for money even more than we do now. That's right. Hey, can we make uh, Monday Night Magic tote bags? Actually, yeah. Because I think that'd be the, awesome. the technology is out there. I've seen it. Because I really like tote bags. I don't know if uh, legally I can do that, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh... mana pool tote bags. Mana pool tote bags. Yes. Can you just start selling actual kiddie pools with your logo on them? That would be freaking sick. <laughs> hey, you, you should just have do that, the man. mana kiddie pools. You should totally do that. Uh, so, what what else is there? There's another thing here that was put here that I didn't bother to read. Do we talk is, about that? I don't think we really need to, but I mean, we can, if you really want to, it was a thing that if you actually read the show notes where I wrote, this is really just for you guys to see if you haven't, because that's then no. That's okay. The then I put it in the show notes. So I will now talk about 
magic online for a second. I mean, yeah, magic, that's the word I meant to say, yeah. We yeah. are consummate professionals here. Consummate. Like our Just, Vs. Right. Yeah. Just like our Vs. So as I mentioned last week, um, they'd said that they were going to post something about magic online on Wednesday. And I'm like, I have no idea what that's going to be. And now I do because time has passed. So um, in the link that I've got in the show notes, um, there's a little bit of an update on how appearance-wise Magic Online hasn't done a whole lot to differentiate tokens. Like, you could always mouse over and see what each... Not tokens, but counters. Um, you could mouse over counters and see what they did, but um, recently they've done some things to make things a little more visually appealing. So as you can see in um, Chewy's screen right now, they've set it up so that different... Um, counters when placed on things get different symbols and also they've sort of color coded it with the idea that the green ones are positive and I believe they said that the the green ones were positive, the orange ones were negative and the blue ones were neutral I want to say, or weird uh, yeah so green counters are used for positive effects orange counters are for negative and blue counters are for neutral. Um, with a few exceptions, like, because it's more fun, blaze counters are always orange, and flood counters are always blue. Um, so some small fun stuff. But the important thing is they've added some symbols as a nice little visual shorthand. Like, you can see on there, on Chewy's screen there, over in front of Karn, Sai, and Aversa, you've got the, you know, the Planeswalker loyalty counters are labeled with a giant green Planeswalker loyalty thing and a number next to it. Whereas the suspend counters are a blue clock. And essentially, if there's more than one, it adds a number. If there aren't, there's no number. Overall, this is just an effort to make it a little more visually appealing. It's actually noted in the article that some of the goal behind this is to make it easier on people that are streaming. So that it's a little easier to take a look and see what's going on. And so the idea that Magic is trying its best to continue appealing to people within the streaming community is nice. So I'm in favor of changes like this whenever they can. All right. Well, you can now... also, in general, at a glance, look over and go, oh, there's a bunch of orange. Things are bad, which is probably what they're going for. And now, in the interest of nothing but comedy, I'm going to read over every type of counter in this uh, table. Ready? Go. Plus one, plus one, minus one, minus one. Egg, hatchling, hoof print, prey, shell, credit, theft, wage, bounty, hit, flame, fury, fuse, shred, spite, strife, blaze, brick, cage, tower, plus one, plus two, plus one, plus oh, plus two, plus two, plus oh, plus one, charge, crystal, gem, despair, doom, death, mannequin, paralyzation, petrification, minus one, minus oh, minus two, minus one, minus two, minus two, minus oh, minus one, minus oh, minus two, <gasps> Devotion, Divinity, Dream, Elixir, Fate, Healing, Intervention, Omen, Unity, Wish, Hunger, Flood, Ice, Tide, Blood, Carrion, Corpse, Eyeball, Infection, Plague, Fungus, Growth, Petal, Polyp, Spore, Vitality, Matrix, Pupa, <laughs> Rust, Awakening, Echo, Luck, Glyph, Key, Manifestation, Slight, Loyalty, Pin, Training, Net, Mining, Pressure, Winch, Silver, Storage, Trap, <laughs> Magnet, Mine, Ore, Scroll, Verse, Music, Sleep, Filibuster, <laughs> Landmark, level, lore, page, plot, quest, sturdy, scream, pain, <laughs> aim, arrowhead, arrow, javelin, m m m muster, phylactery, shield, slime, soot, mire, delay, time, age, eon, fade, hour, isolation, depletion, hourglass, treasure, bribery, gold, feather, vortex, velocity, and wind. Or you could get your degree. <laughs> uh, TV VCR repair. That's the way to go, man. TV VCR repair. You could major in business management or accounting. Uh, oh boy, we we have both kinds, country and western. Um, <laughs> did I miss wow. any of the blue ones? I did not. Okay, so, good. So what I really need. And for, this is for a certain value of need, which is certainly not a thing that anyone actually... We need someone to just totally ASMR that whole list of counters. I feel like someone just did. I, I don't that know was, if that really that was counts nowhere as near ASMR. ASMR. 
There was... Look, I have filters on my own computer. You don't know what you sound like. There was uh... no whispering or tapping on the mic. I am, I am disappointed. Yeah, maybe I'll I'll do that later. I'll get I'll get some magic cards and and rub my fingers across them. Yeah. Yep. Flick them. Um, but yeah, flick, to answer the question from the chat, um, they're not in alphabetical order because they're in symbol order. Yeah. Uh, all of these symbols over here go with and there are. A... Wait, what was that? <laughs> Dimashu threw four bits for clues. Hmm. Not not because of what I what my my uh, amazing achievement that just happened. Hey man, let me have this, here. okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, each of these symbols. There are a lot of symbols here. Like they they went more in depth than I thought they would. There are twenty eight. I, I hadn't actually looked at this. Oh, okay. I'm glad you said that, so I didn't have to go count. Yeah, there are twenty eight distinct icons with a possibility of eighty four different variations because multiplication. So. That's neat. And they're not even using them all. No. Like, there are very few blue counters, it turns out. Thank God. I, I appreciate how the skull <laughs> one refers to things involving money or value, like credit, theft, wage, etc. But the one for actual death, which you would normally associate with the skull, that's all, like, caskets. So. I think this is, a, like, an Orzov coin or something, isn't it? Probably. Maybe. That's what they're going for. Maybe. There's also a rib cage. Doom. Yeah, I think the rib cage was my favorite, just scrolling through these. Yeah. Wow, that that is a Huh. Yeah. That's neat. I don't I don't think it's an anatomically correct rib cage, though. I, I don't know. Someone uh, is there. Is there a doctor in the chat? The You're other kind of. Do I'm the wrong kind of doctor. Okay. <laughs> do you not have a rib cage? I'm only counting heat, eight ribs. <laughs> if you heat this icon up to about 5,800 Kelvin, I can tell you what what it's going to glow like. That's a really odd but, power, Clues. That doesn't really. It's the wrong kind of doctor. Anyway, we talk to Dr. and Mrs. Dr. Clues for this one. I don't think she's watching the stream right now. I'm sorry. It's unfortunate. Terrible. I mean, I don't blame her. Yeah, and I guess she's watching some British crime drama on Netflix. That's probably what she's. Doing. Well, I guess now we know what we have to do to get her attention next week. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Is it. um? Is it Death in Paradise? Yes. Yes, it is. I don't know that one. Because I, I think that's the name of the show. Let's Death in Paradise. I was going to ask if it was... Bill Collins song. If it was the one with um, Idris Elba. Death in Paradise. Luther. Uh, no. No, it's not that one. That's been on my list forever. I really need to watch that. All right. No, uh, let me, let me tell you what shouldn't be on your list. It's a movie called Food Fight. That's not Fair a enough. good idea. Oh, did you watch it? I did because it's actually included free on Amazon Prime. And... That is not a good enough reason to watch. Oh my clothes. god, is it bad? Uh, so when are you guys recording? Uh, soon. Soon is all I can say. TM. TM. <laughs> That's right. Well, there'll be an announcement about the announcement of when we're recording. That. Yeah. Yeah. We take all of our cues from Wizards. Yeah. That... I, I opted not the out company, of that one. Not the company. From actual Wizards. Yeah, I, I opted Somebody out of that one. It. I was like, you know, nah. <laughs> I I have got to find a way to convince Alex Shaw to have me on for a, a, a movie that I actually enjoy. Good luck with that. That, that hasn't so happened. you don't know, they're referencing School of Movies. <laughs> yeah, School of Movies. It's a fantastic podcast. If you're not listening to it, uh, you probably should be. That's what I'll say. Yeah, School of Movies tagged a bunch of people on Twitter. I was like, hey... We're going to do food fight. You want in? And I'm like, no. no. Yeah. See, I didn't really check out the movie before I decided, Hey, you Alex knew what is it was me. the moment you were included. <laughs> That's how you end up watching the room. Uh, yeah. And I think the room was a better film. Oh, by Ooh. far. Yeah. I mean that sincerely. Ooh. Oh my God. Uh, <sighs> anyway. So Phil shall we. Falling for you. Oh, poor Phil. It's painful. Uh, and that's painful given his eye. <laughs> should but. we uh, should we wrap this up then? I think we should. Um, okay. 
I'll go first. So uh, you can find me on Twitter at Squee Goblin Abob. There's no Y in Goblin because, I mean, it was probably hanging out with Fibble Thip. There's no telling when it will be back. Um, likewise, just as a general bit of information, if you're on the east coast of the United States of America right now, there could be a giant hurricane coming to eat you. So pay attention to your local news type stuff. Keep an eye out for any necessary precautions. Um, if you're specifically in North Carolina, like I am, or I guess South Carolina and Virginia are getting a lot of this too. They're probably already taking all of the water out of your local grocery store because people are in full panic mode, admittedly a bit understandably. Um, I'm going to do my best to follow rule number one this coming week, and I recommend everyone else do the same. So just pay attention to stuff. There's a million and one checklist online for things that you can do to prepare for dangerous weather. Um, in general take it seriously this looks really dangerous so be aware and stay on top of things um yeah even as far inland as we are yeah like it takes me it's several hours to get to the ocean and now the ocean is visiting me <laughs> and i i don't like it when the ocean visits me and it has the high ground that doesn't end well yeah you can so. never trust the water never trust blue you trust it so much when you go scuba diving, though. Yeah, that's why I bring along life support to keep it from killing me. Fair enough. But um, past that, um, I will note that... Ooh, I don't know if you can hear sirens in the background. That's very ominous. Um, but yeah, um, I have not seen Iron Fist yet. I'm going to probably watch that this coming weekend, but... I haven't heard anything good or bad about it, so hopefully it's good. Um, I had to push back my group viewing thing, and now that there's going to be a hurricane, I may just abandon the group viewing thing and just watch it. But hopefully good. Live the dream. Um, I think that about covers it for me. So go get um, clues. Hey, uh, I want to echo a couple of things uh, Squeeze said. Yeah, seriously, take this serious the, the 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 hurricane that's coming towards the east coast it does not look like a good time um food water keep those on hand remember you can always just fill up jugs of water fill up your bathtub so you've just got some water you may not be drinking that but it can be used to flush toilets you can just yeah. dump it into the tank to flush the toilet that's how that works they don't need power you don't even need actual water coming to your house to do that just fill up the back of the tank it'll work it's fine um, um hey clues yeah uh, the Cthulhu behind you just pointed. I, I think Bill threw his Fibblethip over to you. Well, he's not going to do it now. You're looking at him, but... No, but he's, he's starting to creep me out. That's I... what he does, yeah. Yeah. Did... There's, there's, there's apparently a Cthulhu behind me. Did, did you guys know that? Yeah, the whole time. Did, I mean, did no. Fibblethip make it over to you? Huh? Oh, hey, 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 look look who's here. Okay. Hey. Yeah, he's he's here. You're not totally lost now, buddy. You're safe. Oh, we found his way back. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, if you want to hear more huh. from me, uh, there's another podcast I do. It's called Random Discard. We talk about geeky things. Um, and speaking of geeky things, I recorded a bunch of audio while I was at uh, PAX West uh, last weekend. I'm going to try and uh, assemble that into a little uh, audio essay of... Uh, of the things I did while I was out there. So look for that coming soon, question mark, uh, modulo whenever I can actually find time to do it. Cause my goodness, these early morning classes will in fact be the death of me. And to anyone who's in my early morning classes who might be uh, listening, I'm so sorry. I am not at my best at that time of day. You're, you're really getting watered down clues is what you're do, getting. So this, this is a question. How much power do professors have over that? Uh, depends on the professor. Uh, I have none. So zero, bupkis. Uh, every semester they tell me, hey, these are the classes you're teaching. And I go, yes, yes, they are. So yeah, I have no, no control over that whatsoever. Hmm. Um, some have some influence, but it is academia. So uh, those gears grind slowly. So it's not like you can suddenly change things. That's what I'll say. There's a lot of politics that goes on in what, what department has control over what rooms at what time of day so that's when they can schedule their classes and no i'm not making that up 
it's gotcha. a lot harder than you would think it is. It's I know it's a big ugly mess. One of my high level physics classes. It was uh, th- th- no, not thermo. It was. I don't remember which one. Actually, it might have been Thermo. I hated Thermo, by the way. That's fair. Mainly because it was at 9 a.m. Nobody likes 9 a.m. classes. No. There were this many of us in that class. Is it six? It is two. It's two. Okay, There were two of us in that class. We asked Dr. Praytap, can you please not do this at 9 o'clock? And he goes, no, my hands are tied. We were like, damn it. Yeah, he may not have been lying. Uh, um, no, he was, because the next semester in ENM two, there was one yeah. person in that class, and he moved it from ass o'clock in the morning to like just after lunch. Did he? And we get were like between those two times. Uh, no, okay, <laughs> he already yeah. had that. I think. All right. Well, then, then he didn't like you. He's the uh, no. He's Maybe not he got tired of anymore. your nonsense and wasn't going to go through it again. I mean, that wouldn't surprise me, but that means that there was only one of us in class at any given time, and at, at, on two separate occasions, neither of us showed up, and he was not pit, uh, He was not happy with us, and we were like, you didn't want to change the time. <laughs> he was not happy with us. But anyway, sorry, I just thought I'd, I'd ask yeah, no, because of no, that that's, specific that's fine. example. Maybe maybe I should start doing academia cast episodes of Random Discard, where I talk about the trials and tribulations of working in higher education. They would be very depressing shows. You might want to wait until do you that. don't work there anymore. Yeah. Wait for well, tenure, I mean, please. It's, 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 not, it's not like I'm going to say anything that's going to get me fired. At least, I hope not. Yeah, like... Yeah, I hope not. The minute Clues gets tenure, he's going to announce his new podcast, The Two Hour Hate. <laughs> And it's going to be the most regularly updated thing you've ever seen. <laughs> yep. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, I was signing off. Um, if you want to reach me directly, your best bet is the Twitters. I am at LockLuze, spelled just like it is in the show notes. You can also find me on Mastodon. Please find me on Mastodon. It's at LockLuze at Mastodon.social? Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> That sounds right. I, I mostly look, my, my, my feed over there is mostly pictures of like kittens and puppies. It's actually kind of great. Oh, so it's like oh, a Discord hey. chat that other people can see. Hey, if you are on, uh, if you are on Twitter, well, first of all, sorry. If you're on Twitter, there is a Twitter account that you should be following and it's at bunny archive. It is just pictures of bunnies. And it's it's pretty amazing. I can respect that. So, there you go. That was for you, Clues. Yeah, I appreciate that. Aw, look at him. I meant to oh, send that to you earlier today. There, there is a, a neighborhood cat or a complex yeah. cat. Not he's not complex. There is an apartment complex say, cat who's a local simple sense. cat. Yeah, who, <laughs> who wanders around here and sleeps on the chair, sitting outside of the apartment next door. Like, every time I go outside, he's in the chair asleep, or he's under the stairs over here asleep, depending on the the temperature. And for four, five days in a row, he's been in one of those two spots when I leave the apartment. No matter when I leave the apartment, time of day or night, he's just... And I snapped a picture of him and sent it to Clues, because he's adorable. All right, you should take more pictures of the cat and send them to me. It'll look, it'll just, I could send that same picture every day and it would, it, it would be real. Like that would, just, that's what you set up existence. Could you set up a Twitter bot that does nothing but tweet that picture every day? No. No. Okay. All right. Well then I guess it is over to you, Chewy. All right then. So hi, I'm Chewy. You can, hi, Chewy. Hi, you can find me here on Monday Night Magic over on the Mana Pool as well, and of course, streaming here on twitch.tv slash the Mana Pool just all the damn time. The last stream was Saturday where we played, uh, I have hiccups, where we played Transformers Devastation, and it was pretty sick. Did you fight Decepticons? I did. Ooh, it's like Legacy. 
I uh, I beat the dog out of Devastator, and then I beat I the mean, dog out of each individual piece of Devastator. None of those should have dog in them. So good job. And then I beat the dog out of Devastator again. Sounds circular. Yeah. There were a few others in there too, like uh, Blitzwing. That's his name. I was like the 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 triple transformer dude who wasn't Astro Train. I always remember Astro <laughs> yeah, I Train. I love the clarification. <laughs> yeah, I always remember Astro Train. It's just funny because he's a train and, and a space shuttle, and the other one was a tank and a and a jet. But I could never remember his name. It's Blitzwing. That's a very dumb name. Pretty sure I had to beat Starscream too. That I game is that awesome, dude. Crazy. Like Starscream actually has a null ray. Ooh. Yeah, like it's it's Gen One, on point, and it's really pretty. Did they get like the voices? Yeah, yeah, Frank Welker and Peter Cullen, and I don't think yeah. Starscream is the right guy. He didn't sound quite right. Okay. But he was close. Anyway. But yeah. I also stream Hearthstone and assorted other things. There's a new game that I'm going to uh, get. I think I've decided I'm just going to spend the money and, and get it and play it. It's going to be awesome, but I will not say what. Because then say what? Say what? Because I don't want to. But anyway, so yeah, if you would like to help support what I do, the most direct way is through Patreon at patreon.com slash the manipool where you can sign up to become a lifeguard. Uh, uncommon lifeguards get manipool episodes and YouTube videos early and they get an uncommon colored name in the Discord server. The Manipool Discord server, where we talk about all kinds of stuff. Magic, Hearthstone, video games in general, stuff going on, whatever nonsense, s silliness. Yeah. Uh, the rare lifeguards get the early stuff and the odds and ends, all the stuff recorded before and after both Monday Night Magic and the Manipool, and get a rare colored, you know, the rarity color? Yeah. Get a golden name in the Discord server. And then the mythic lifeguards get the early stuff, the odds and ends, and the shout out on both podcasts, and their name on the end slate for all the YouTube videos, and a mythic colored name in the Discord server. Yeah. And so I'd like to thank... Oh God, I already did those uh, counters. What was I thinking? Kim Ho, Andrew Hunt, Al... Lance Delicious, Team You, Hellas, Are You, Connor Kennedy, John Morris, Jeff Spencer, Stuart's Law, PJ McMullen, Bosco Bretain, Casey, Faye and Says, Danny Liao, Jason Doan, Cody Buckowing, Jake Jansons, Jason Kaus, Brian DeLucci, Stark Maximum, John Parker, Jimmy Scott, Violet Moon, Dan Holm, Bartle, Mike Miller and the Beast Father, Aaron Goodwine. Whew. So thank you all so very much for your support. I quite literally could not do it without you. Oh, and I didn't mention the YouTube channel. Hey, over on YouTube, I've got the Stanley Parable just ended on YouTube. The the last episode, episode six, which was actually seven because it started with zero with the demo, uh, went up. So that's over now. It's very sad. The clues, pl stop, stop sending pictures of bunnies. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, they're so cute. Uh, oh, DuckTales Remastered is almost Ooh. done. There's one, I, th I think that'll end up being one more video, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there will just be a montage of frustration at the end. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, the Hearthstone Boomsday Project Puzzle Lab videos are going up steadily. I also have some good old Hearthstone ranked games that were uh, pretty good. I don't show the boring ones on YouTube because that defeats the purpose, doesn't it? And then I've got one Overwatch Mystery Heroes game with... It was me and Squee and Cap and Steph. Well, it was two games. It was, it was two games back-to-back -back on Dorado where we had a lot of fun just goofing off, so I turned it into an 11-minute video. I compressed oh. it, cut out all the actual gameplay. It was just us goofing around. That does sound like us. Uh, blaming things on Cap and... You know, that definitely sounds like that. Yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> Cap, I see you in the chat. It's your fault. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh yeah, they're Insecticons too. Nice. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, uh, yeah. So that's what's going on over in, in my neck of the woods. Uh, soon I will be. Oh god, I've got one XCOM video left to make. Whoops. Okay, I'll probably do that tomorrow because I completely forgot I hadn't done that yet. And I'll be doing Rogue Legacy soon for YouTube because I finally finished it on stream. It was a four-hour stream, so I'm going to knock out some uh, high points of that in, I don't know, two or three or so videos. And then the new stuff that I'm going to start streaming. These are all things that are going on at YouTube and Twitch slash the Manipool. Yay! But anyway, anyway, we're going to be done now. So, this has been uh, Monday Night Magic number 623. But Clues couldn't send bunny links anymore, so now he's he's just stopped in his reading a book. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, just reading random stuff I'm finding around my home office. <laughs> so... <laughs> you know... Bunnies aren't just cute like everybody supposes. <laughs> no, they got them hoppy legs and twitchy little noses. So thank you all <laughs> so very much for listening. <laughs> and uh, uh, go play some magic. <laughs>